welcome bitches one and all to my reaction to season two episode one of heartstopper out so we are here <laughs> i have been waiting so long for this season now i think it's safe to say season one was such a moment last year it was such a big shift i don't know how to describe it just like seeing content geared towards an lgbtq plus storyline that was that well written that well produced just it was beautiful and every single part about it i think that's what made heartstopper so special every single aspect of it was so well done like even down to the bloody soundtrack that was incredible so i think it's safe to say that my season two expectations are a little bit high some would say too high but i would not <laughs> now i have somehow remained completely spoiler free i don't know anything except i know that there is some kind of parish trip involved i don't know if it's like a separate holiday that certain characters take or if it's a school trip based on the idea that i've heard the phrase parish trip i think it's safe to say that it is some kind of school trip but like i said going in blind don't know anything avoided all trailers avoided even all pictures and every time i see some heart stopper i'm like Zoom. so i'm very excited to get into it and so yes with that said let's jump back in finally to the world of Heartstopper. oh hi <laughs> it's been a while oh the leaf that's so cute instagram dm just like they began <laughs> right i know we're right at the start and i'm so sorry but we all know very well that i will be going back and reading those messages it was the first thing in the morning so i think it qualifies i would say it qualifies you said hi right in the morning that is legit a good morning text good morning, boyfriend. bless them <laughs> Tori just like, oh my god. <laughs> uh oh. Oh. Hi. Hi. Where are we going? Not in there, apparently. <laughs> Excuse me, what are we doing here? Guess what? What? I came out to my mum last night. Oh my god, how did it go? Really well. She was oh, completely Okay, right. Couple of things to take away from that. One, we now know the timeline of events it is quite literally <laughs> right after. But um yeah, I'm so glad that we're gonna get to see this scene. I'm gonna go back to ten seconds just so we can like experience the scene in full, but I didn't think we'd get his reaction to this. That's so cute. Oh. Bless the Want a well done kiss. A well done yeah. kiss. Oh, they're making me jealous again like i like imagine having this kind of support when you were their age like actually insane oh just let me win charlie yes i can't do this anymore i can't do this anymore <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um, really yeah we're in my room oh no oh shit <laughs> they are honestly so fucking precious i can't handle it to actually see this is the thing it's like season one was such a huge build up of them coming together as a couple the the fact that we're in we're what how many minutes in are we three minutes we are three minutes into the episode and we are getting all of this cuteness of them being together like this is like mind-boggling insanity <laughs> i told myself i was ready for this but i don't know if i'm ready Hey, they've kept with that same editing style. I love it. So cute. Oh. <laughs> You're making me feel really single right now. I have <laughs> Yes, we're all fully aware. And he's amazing. <laughs> I mean, Tao. Tao. He wants to come out to some of his friends, at least. Um, yeah. I okay. We I was going to say because. I felt like you could have taken it either way at the end of season one. The end of season one felt very much like a big expression of love in a very public setting. Obviously, it wasn't like huge, big expression of love, like literally shouting from the roof rooftops, I love Charlie, to the whole school, you know what I mean? But it was somewhat public, so I was a little bit confused as to how they were going to handle this, like whether they were fully just going to be like, you know what, we're going to be out and proud in public. Because like, 
it, <laughs> it's much easier said than done jesus christ like that would involve especially someone like nick who like he's going through the process of he was just coming to terms with his sexuality himself he was just accepting himself the idea of then suddenly being out to everyone jesus fucking christ oh especially when like charlie and that are just saying he's friends with the rugby lot like that's inherently probably your least likely accepting group you know what i mean but fucking hell good on nick for coming out to his mum and then already considering coming out to his friends like go off king as long as you're both fine with it and you're looking out for each other i'm sure it will be fine Tell Hell Sue, yeah. are you giving Charlie relationship advice? Oh, <laughs> oh it's refrigerated. I was about to be concerned that there was excuse me. coffee with Your milk excuse. in it. No, I... <laughs> you have it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tao. Oh my god, bless them. That is so cute. Oh, that was <laughs> the way that like they were enjoying the moment of fighting and then he realized that he won and he was like, wait, hold up. This means that I've just taken this away from her. <laughs> Bless. Hey, Nick. Oh, God. Oh. 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 Fuck off, Harry. Nicholas! <laughs> Imogen, you okay? I have something very important to show you. What? She got a puppy. She got a puppy. I named him Brickman because that's where I want to live. <laughs> okay, right. She has a puppy. Great. All that. But fucking hell. The dagger eyes that Ben had just then. Calm down, hun. Jesus Christ. You really, like, are you shocked? Like, I'm assuming he's giving Nick dagger eyes because of the whole thing with Charlie. Are you fucking shocked, Broski? You treated him like crap. But, um, yeah. Couple of things I want to touch on. One... I'm glad that they included Harry and Ben again, not because I like them one fucking bit. Absolutely hate them both. But I feel like these kind of characters are very necessary in their story. It wouldn't work well if it was all lovey-dovey without any kind of drama slash negativity. Uh, it just wouldn't work as a storytelling, like from a storytelling perspective and all that, you know? But um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was, I feel like there was a little bit of a miscommunication about my feelings towards Imogen last season. I didn't hate her. There was no like actual negativity on my part. Like, I had no negative feelings towards Imogen. The only feelings that I had towards Imogen was I was getting a bit frustrated that she was saying things that weren't true. Like, when she came out with the fact that her and Nick were dating, it's like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> come on, hun. You're causing issues with him potentially getting with Charlie and all that. That was where my frustration was coming from. But her as a character, end of the day, she's literally just a young girl who had feelings for a guy who isn't reciprocating those feelings we have all been there we have all had those feelings so i have huge respect for imogen for getting past that and actually being a good friend but oh nick coming out to her i don't think she would ever have an issue with it i don't think there would be any negativity the only thing that i think would happen is maybe there is a bit of i don't know maybe there is a bit of a negative feeling just in the case of her feelings for him maybe not fully going away her crush for him not fully going away and so it's gonna hurt a little but in regards to him being with charlie and him being bi and being in an, a relationship with a guy there won't be any negativity on her part we're still friends aren't we i promise i don't fancy you anymore <laughs> oh bless her yeah i still want to be friends okay good <laughs> bless her heart stop also fancy someone else now <gasps> really don't be harry or ben okay fine don't tell me We've been friends since year seven, but... If anything actually happens, I promise I'll tell you. Imogen, if it's Harry or Ben, I will literally have to sit you down for a cup of coffee and we are going to have a talk. We are going to have a talk. Actually, fuck off. What? Actually, fuck off. That is ridiculous. My rules are simple. Shut up. No chatting, no phones. No annoying question. No phones. Nick, you can get your phone taken away. Yikes. Nicholas Nelson. Why not let you off with a warning, seeing as I hadn't quite finished listing my rules? <laughs> if I catch you with that phone again, I'll be confiscating it. Okay. Thank you. I think we're going to get on just fine. You know what, Ben? Wipe that smug little look off your face or I'll wipe it off for you. Now, uh, I feel bad for Nick in this situation because, like, Obviously, sitting next to Ben, he is having a lot of negative feelings right now, and likely his source of comfort is Charlie. 
So not being able to text him in this situation is probably going to allow the rage to boil over. But just don't let it get to you, Nick. I know that is so much easier said than done, but don't let it get to you. Don't give him the satisfaction of you being angry with him. Literally act like he doesn't exist and he's a piece of shit. That's all he really deserves. I said sorry to Charlie for what happened. Don't. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, he's forgiven. All well and good. He said sorry. If you're trying to keep it quiet, you should probably stop acting so gay, man. <laughs> oh, we love a good bit of internalized homophobia. Oh, I'm so happy that you live in a world of hate, Ben, because that is what you deserve right now. People like this, sorry, I know I've paused so much. I'm honestly going to debate having little skip times so you can see when to just skip me. <laughs> but um, honestly, when it comes to Ben, I it's a hard one because you sit here and you think to yourself, at the end of the day, he is hurting as an individual and he is lashing out because of that hurt and because I don't know what his home life is like, but it could be that he doesn't have that support system at home. It could be that he has a homophobic parent and that is what is fueling his self-hatred, but even though that is sad, even though you sit here and you think to yourself, oh, I feel bad for you for going through that. It does not excuse his actions, does not excuse how he behaves towards people, how he treats Charlie and Nick. It's just like, I can feel bad for you, but I can still tell you that your actions are wrong and you need to fucking change. Obviously, I'm a bit disappointed that even after everything that happened in season one, he hasn't got that message yet. He hasn't got the message that what you do and say is not okay and that you need to change how you fucking behave ben but maybe this season he might have that i don't really i don't know if i'm looking for a redemption i don't know if i'm looking for a redemption in my in terms of ben i just he's one of those characters where it's like i don't really want him redeemed i just want him to get to a better place and we can all just happily agree to go our separate ways we can all just agree that okay you're not going to be a fucking homophobic piece of shit now but you're not going to be in my life you're not going to be like this good presence like i don't want you here you know nick put your phone away okay i want to rejoin the rugby team interesting interesting <laughs> you know you don't have to do this if you don't want to is this charlie's way of like coming out with nick okay well if, if you don't oh, want no, no, me no, no, here. No. come on I need you. That was so fucking cute. Stop. You come back to rugby? Yeah. Yes, lad. Come on then. Bless. What? Are you still in a mood of us? Oh, his accent. I hate it. Let's go, lads. We've all been playing like girls lately. Girls. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I don't mean any disrespect. I just find that kind of accent so hilarious. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Pass the ball, man. I was open. Why aren't you guys playing like a team? Oh my god, you know what? This is what frustrates me about sports in school. People get so fucking into it. I don't understand it. Like, I remember we were playing football once and I wasn't really giving a shit because who the fuck gives a shit about football? But the people in my team were getting so heated and so like, oh my god, what are you doing? And I was just chilling there like, um, I don't know, trying to enjoy life. Like, sorry, I'm not getting so fucking worked up over a school sports game. Jesus Christ, but I feel like rugby's the worst of it because I feel like testosterone is fucking flying around right now. And I just, <laughs> I'm a sensitive person. And not only am I a sensitive person, I have a short fuse. So if they were shouting at me like this, I would get pissed. I'd be like, you know what? Fuck off. <laughs> so you're a better man than me, Nick. Elle, listen, you deserve to have the perfect romance. Yeah. Like us. That was beautiful. How is literally the worst person to have a crush on. <laughs> Sometimes I think he might like you back, but it's probably just Tao being weird. Tao being weird and probably fear and anxiety coming up thinking that you don't feel the same, so. What if you try and actually flirt with him? Just to see what happens. Yeah, flirt with him. That's an interesting perspective because that could go one of two ways because... You're quiet today. What's up? Their relationship might feel weird if she's forcing flirting when okay. they're so used to their dynamic, you know. My mom's been moaning at me to get a haircut. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> probably a good idea. <laughs> you should do what you want. I hated that. I hated that. I hated that. <laughs> I don't like watching people flirt. <laughs> I got you a present. Aww. Why? 
because we've been going out for two months. It's our two-month anniversary. It sounds silly when you say it like that. No, no, I was... No, <laughs> Listen, they are so fucking cute, and don't get me wrong, I'm not judging, but <laughs> two-month anniversary, what do you mean? <laughs> but that's so cute that you got him a little present. Bless your little heart, Charlie. What <laughs> fucking cutie. And how did you know this is my favourite chocolate bar? Oh, he knows, my boy. Um, you mentioned it ages ago, so... <laughs> oh, Charlie, I love you. Oh! I feel like this season is mending my little gay heart. <laughs> and that's why we shouldn't kiss at school. Oh. Charlie, keep your voice down! I, I want to tell people... Ooh. Like, like imagine that, I just... Need time? It's hard to find the right time. You don't have to tell everyone. Or everyone has been through it. It is all good. No more kissing at school. It's too risky. Bless them. One part of their relationship that I hope isn't causing issues is the idea that because Charlie was with um, Ben and Ben made him keep it a secret, I hope that that is not influencing Nick. I'm hoping it's not causing Nick anxiety, thinking that like, the longer I'd leave this, the more it's going to make Charlie feel like shit. Because when he was with Ben, he made it keep it a secret and all that. Because, like, I think it's safe to say that Ben asking Charlie to keep it a secret was not the issue of that relationship. Like, you can fully respect someone. As long as you're okay with it yourself, you can fully respect someone needing their time to come out and all of that. Ben was, like, actively, like, internally, but very actively homophobic. And he treated Charlie like shit, acted like he didn't exist when they passed each other in hallways and all that. Like... It was an extremely toxic relationship. So that was what that was. So don't go thinking that that is the problem, Nick. You are allowed to have your time to figure out when and who to come out to and all that. Are you saying to hang out with us? I will be going upstairs. <laughs> Mum and dad hardly ever go away at weekends. You can invite some of your friends over. I treasure my alone time. Absolute mood, absolute mood. I'm helping Nick come out to one of his oldest friends. Oh, Imogen's coming over, okay. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, the fact that he went through all of this effort for it as well. Go off. Hi. Love you. I make cupcakes. Wow. I make cupcakes. Stop. Golden Retriever Rugby Boy who bakes. Oh, shit. They're all here. Oh. Oh. I will say, not too sure about the idea of having, what, seven people and then Imogen being the only one who doesn't know and then telling her. I don't know. I feel like that kind of, like, it, it might bring out a weird dynamic i could be completely wrong but i feel like it's one of those moments where like it's best done in private but again if they want to go down the route of like being more casual about it then that's also this is like the best environment just like if you make it a big scene she might feel uncomfortable that there are like a lot of people looking at her in that moment and in my like i don't know it might make her feel pressured or anxious i don't know but i just if I was in this kind of situation, even though obviously as a gay man, I would not give a shit. <laughs> I would feel a little bit weird that there are like a lot of people who know staring at me. But maybe he'll pull her to the side. I don't know, but... Yes, no, yes. Yeah. If you were a worm, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> don't tell me she did the, would you still love me if I was a worm? <laughs> yeah, I swear, I'm going to move into your house just so I can get your mum to make me these every day. Oh my god, me too. Give me a bow bun, please. So, when can you tell your mum? Hey, my mum wouldn't let me. Darcy! <laughs> Aww. It's not necessarily sad, because you can very easily, like, they're all still young. Like, I didn't have my first relationship in school, so I wouldn't feel bad if I was Toby, but I can understand why there would be those negative feelings of, like, I'm the only one who's not in a couple, but I could be misinterpreting. It could be that it's not a matter of like, I wish I had a relationship. It could be more so he's just feeling a little bit lonely right now because his friends are all in their little duos and not really talking to him, you know, which is kind of shitty, but I'm not going to blame them. When you're young and in love, it can feel like the only important thing in the world and it would completely distract you. So I understand why they're not exactly leaving their little bubbles, but come on, include him a little bit, you know? Uh, come in, come in. My social anxiety is going through the roofs. God, I would be stressed. Does she uh, know about you guys? Not yet. 
going to sell her today. Oh. It'll be fine. She's an ally. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's a joke in universe. How did you get to know everyone? I guess it was Charlie first. Um, Kismi and Charlie, we're... Best friends? You know, we're in the same form. Uh, and... I thought he would get a bit scared. Bless him. Yeah. Oh, Gee. oh, Nick! I I could feel the anxiety from here, my boy. It's okay. I don't know why it's so hard to just say it. <sighs> it it's one of those things that we all go through. The uh, the very idea of coming out is such a frustrating experience because, like, not only are you like it's it's a lifelong thing. It's something that, like, say you move workplaces and you know you now have different work colleagues it's one of those things where you're gonna have to technically come out again and it's just like such a frustrating point of life like it shouldn't be necessary it shouldn't be one of those things where it's like i have to tell you this specific bit of information because you're not going to like you're going to assume something else you are going to assume that i'm straight you are going to assume that when i say my partner i'm referencing my girlfriend Do you get what i mean like it's a frustrating point of life but it's one of those things it gets it would get easier with time you just you get used to it and you get not only do you get used to it you get to the point where you're like i don't actually give a shit <laughs> like you get to the point where even if you do have to tell your new work colleagues and all that it's at that point where you're like I i'm just gonna say my boyfriend off the bat like i'm not even gonna explain myself because i shouldn't fucking have to you know <laughs> also another thing why do they have so many cactuses like cacti cacti is the plural isn't it why do they have so many cacti like excuse me the coursework needs to be amazing if I'm gonna use it to get into art college. What about art college, stuff? hell yeah. I could be your model. <laughs> Wait, tilt your head a bit to your left. That's your right. <laughs> then lean in. <laughs> stop, stop. Actually, don't stop. Uh, sorry. I'll go order our pizzas. Ah, uh, that's one of those really frustrating scenes because he is, scared of his own feelings and it is causing him to get like too overdrived by them to the point where he panics stops the moment and says sorry but l is going to take it that he doesn't feel that way l is going to take it that like oh well if he doesn't even want to kiss me when we have the perfect chance then he obviously doesn't share those feelings Do you know what i mean it's one of those frustrating things it's just like i wish i could get in tao's head and help him i wish i could control his body for a moment and just let it happen because once it happens everything will just feel so silly like you will just feel like why did why was i scared why was i anxious like why did i let that affect me for so long like, you know what i mean it's one of those fucking annoying moments where you just need to get out of your head but i know that's easier said than done you and Elle have been doing work like all afternoon i was trying to get into this prestigious art college she'll definitely get in but she's still worried about it we do, do not get this dynamic you? a lot. If you're apart next year. What do you mean? Uh-oh. We're not dating. Uh-oh. Oh, no, She's I, my friend. It's none of your business. Tao. Okay, right. Couple of things to take away from that. One, it's now extremely obvious. Obviously, we were aware before, but it's now extremely obvious that the thing that is on his mind is that it would ruin their friendship. Is the getting with her would ruin their friendship and he relies on their friendship so much that the thought of it getting ruined is like absolutely unthinkable in his mind and so he doesn't want to even consider it but his animosity towards nick is starting to get a little bit frustrating it's starting to get to the point where i, I want to just go in and shout at him like if you have love for charlie if you truly care about charlie stop treating nick like shit he hasn't actually done anything to you he obviously makes charlie so happy and is a shining light in charlie's life you need to put that first and stop getting so angry towards him because it is not okay. Even in that moment, it's not like like Nick wasn't trying to make it his business. Nick wasn't trying to like be like, oh yeah, da, da. he was simply just referencing the fact that it seems as though you two have got a bit close and he was trying to share that good feeling with you. It wasn't anything negative. Charlie, can I use your bathroom? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll show you where it is nice good idea that's what i mean it's always best to do it sort of one-on-one -on -one. you can have it's it's a bit harder because you have to be a little bit more vulnerable but so much better that's the uh that's the bathroom there oh, i still remember the first time i told my best friend oh still gives me anxiety i, I kind of had something that i, I want to tell you it's, it's kind of hard to is it about you and charlie oh i, sh I should have let you say it 
No, my it's darling. Just, it is kind of obvious. <laughs> you didn't like me because you're gay. Um. Uh. Well, I, I I'm bisexual actually. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I didn't think about that aspect of things. Thinking you don't like me because you're gay. Actually, no, I, I do have the capacity to like you. I just don't. <laughs> oh, Imogen, please don't take it that way, though, my darling. Please. People are just sometimes incompatible. People just work better as friends. It's nothing against you. It's nothing to say that you are not someone worthy of dating. It's just that you weren't the one for him. And he's technically not the one... The way I've always viewed it is he's not going to be the one for you if you're not the one for him, you know? Like, you wouldn't want to be with someone who isn't actually that into you, you know what I mean? You'd want to be with someone where there is that equal feeling of, oh my god, I fucking love you. So just, like, rest assured that you are going to find your person and it is going to be good, my darling. Aww. I'm sorry, I don't actually know how to react. <laughs> That's all you could ever ask for, my darling. Pure show okay, of love well, and support. now you know about Charlie... You have to tell me about your crush. Oh, come on. It's only fair. It is only fair. Oh, fine, okay. Not me saying that because I want to know. <laughs> oh, Imogen. Imogen, make better decisions. We do not go from Nick to Ben. That is the worst, worst rebound I've ever heard in my entire bloody life. I don't even have words right now. I can't even express the level of disgust that that is making me feel. My darling, I love you. You need to make better decisions in your life. The flirting did not work. I think I need to try and go for Ben. See what's happening, Tao. We need to... Don't tell me they're talking to each other. <laughs> I love them. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I really hope we get more Isaac this season. I really hope we explore his character a bit more. Oh, no kiss goodbye. Hell yeah. Good job, my boy. Well done. I was going to say, look, you can, <laughs> you can kiss goodbye, but <laughs> there's a moment where it's kind of awkward now. Hi. I'm sorry, but Charlie in a cardigan is like perfection. He's so cute. Charlie, I signed that form for the Paris trips on the fridge. Oh, thanks. Oh my God, we're actually seeing parents. Oh my God. I know we saw his dad a little bit, but oh. Uh. You know my friend Nick? Yeah. Oh, here we go. I thought I probably should tell you. I was going to say, I was a little bit, not confused or... I, I, I was thinking his parents are very, very okay with him and Nick going into his room with the door closed for like hours on end. You know what I mean? Like, I know that some parents are a little bit off with that. I don't know about mine because <laughs> I never had a relationship when I was a kid, which I'm definitely not salty about. But um, I don't know if mine would have been that way, but I know it's quite a common thing for parents to feel uh, more comfortable with you leaving the door open. So I don't know if that will change anything, but I guess we'll see. He's my boyfriend. Oh, well, I, you know... It He's a he's a very sporty, laddish sort of boy. I, I I wouldn't have assumed he was gay. They're concerned. Nick is banned from sleepovers from now on. What? And I suppose Nick's going on this Paris trip as well. Yeah. So that's why you've been talking about it nonstop for weeks. <sighs> what Bedroom interesting perspective change. I'm leaving. No hanky panky till you're married. Stop saying hanky panky. Okay. Exactly what I thought. Uh, his parents would no longer be okay with those kind of things. I was originally thinking to myself, I'm a little bit confused as to why they haven't caught on and have already asked him to leave the door open because like, knowing that your gay child has got a person of the same gender with them in their bedroom for like hours on end, if you had these concerns already that they appear to have, I would have thought they would have already enforced those rules. But I didn't think about the fact that their internal prejudice would keep them from being able to even think that Nick was capable of liking a boy. <laughs> but um, yeah, kind of sucks for Charlie now. Kind of puts him in a bad spot in terms of like, oh, this is going to change things for a more, down a more negative route. But 
it was necessary. You couldn't just hide it from your parents this whole time. If these are their rules, then they're their rules. Um, maybe if you spend time in Nick's house, you can have some alone time and all that. But at the end of the day, you are young. You're living in your parents' house. This is a thing that a lot of people go through. Most times, it's just to keep you safe. So I hope it's not taken too harsh by Charlie. You're telling people then? Yeah. You're not worried about getting bullied again? We just want people to know we're together. I'm gonna do everything I can Aww. to make sure Nick doesn't have to deal with what I do. Oh, oh, bless both of them. Bless her for having big sister energy of wanting to protect him. And bless him for thinking like, I'm gonna protect Nick from what I went through. Oh, my boy he is the happiest little golden retriever I've ever seen. <laughs> Practically wagging his tail. <laughs> Oh, that's the end! Oh, thank fuck I'm recording episode two right now because I want to get one ahead on Patreon, but bloody hell. Why is there so much at the end, though? Is it all just credits? Jesus, four minutes of credits! Okay, I'm not going to judge, but bloody hell. What an episode! Oh, it still feels strange that we're back. It still feels strange that we're watching Heartstopper. <laughs> like... It was just such a moment last year, and it's been so long that it, I don't know, I can't even, I can't put into words why it feels so weird, but it does. <laughs> but yes, let's get into the episode breakdown then. So, I talked a lot in the episode, for which I am sorry for, but it was bound to happen. Um, we had a lot of new development. Should we go over each character then? Should we go over each character and their story? I would say, yeah, I'll leave Nick and Charlie till the end. So let's start with Isaac. So I d we didn't get a lot of Isaac this episode, but I noticed that he was reading the book Ace of Spades, which as far as I'm aware, I swear, I, I remember looking at it. I don't think it, I don't think the Ace part is in reference to Ace people, but I do wonder if that's what they're getting at. I do wonder if that's like a little hint for the audience as to his character. So I guess we will have to wait and see, but I do hope we get a lot more of Isaac this season. He was one of the characters. I think he was the main character last season where I wished that he had got more screen time because we'd got a fair amount for the others. They all had a bit of a storyline going on except for Isaac. So I hope that we get a little bit more of him. I feel like in a show like this, it is hard to explore a storyline that isn't a romance. So maybe that's why they haven't touched on Isaac so far. Maybe that's why we haven't got a lot of Isaac because they're just figuring out how to like fit his character into the story but i i don't think it's that hard to write a story for someone that isn't about romance like <laughs> not everything has to be a romance in a tv show so fingers crossed they can find a good storyline for him and we get to see more of him now moving on let's talk about obviously tara and darcy beautiful as ever what little cutie pies just chilling there having the living their best life but again i want a bit more for them i want a little bit more for them i want to explore their characters a bit more because at the end of the day, I feel like we can break season one down to we were exploring the romance of Nick and Charlie with other romantic elements in the back. Like we had Tara and Darcy, we had Tao and Elle, like we had these other moments. It was very romance based. Whereas now we've got to the point where Nick and Charlie are together. I feel like we are definitely going to keep exploring romance ideas, obviously. But I think that now they're together and we've got past that awkward stage of like, I like you, you like me, oh, let's get together. I feel like now we've got past the awkward stage, we can actually explore other parts of their characters. We can go into, like, a bit deeper into who they are as people and their own internal struggles outside of being part of the LGBTQ plus community and all of that, you know? So I hope we get a bit more into that, and especially with Tara and Darcy, because they fall under the realm, again, of, like, the only thing we've explored is their romance. So I hope we get a little bit more into that. But um, moving on, we have Tao and Elle. Tao and Elle, oh, it's a hard one because... I think L is doing absolutely nothing wrong. Like L, L is completely open to being in a relationship with Tao. She is wanting to be in a relationship with Tao and she's trying her hardest. The unfortunate thing is Tao isn't necessarily doing anything wrong. He is valid in his feelings. He is allowed to be scared. He is allowed to be anxious, you know, but it's just frustrating from a viewer's perspective, knowing that they both have these feelings for each other, knowing that Tao would want to be in a relationship. They would have a good relationship. He's just scared. And that fear comes from his fear of losing Elle as a friend, a fear of losing that trust, losing that connection, losing that bond. He relies so much on his relationship with Elle. Like, she is his main emotional support for life. 
that the idea of losing her due to i don't know due to them not being compatible in a relationship whatever whatever his fears specifically are it, it's i feel like the possibility of being in a couple with her is worth the fear of that loss you know it's worth that anxiety because that could bring a whole new element to your relationship and it could like it could allow you to blossom as a person it could bring so much good to you so fingers crossed he lets it happen fingers crossed he has a moment of self-reflection where he thinks to himself what the fuck am i doing i want to tell her that i love her we're not love her i want to tell her i like her you know what i mean <laughs> but yes now moving on let's talk about imogen before we get into nick and charlie imogen questionable choice questionable choice i just i don't know where these feelings of ben have come from i don't know if it's just like they've become closer friends and she likes him i don't know i don't know what ben is like behind the scenes you know i don't know what ben is like with his friends because evidently he behaves a lot differently than he did when we saw him with charlie and when he's been angry because his fucking internal homophobia is coming out so he obviously behaves differently. So I don't know what part of him she's seen that she's like, oh my God, <laughs> gimme. But evidently she's made a fucking terrible decision. And I hope that Nick can talk to her about that. I hope that we can have a conversation about that because you got to figure out how to go about it where it doesn't feel like you're annoyed at her. And it doesn't feel like you're judging her decision because like she is not aware. I just feel like you need to go into it with a conversation of being like, can we talk about Ben for a second? Because I need to make you aware of something that may change your opinion. And in my opinion, I think the having that conversation, like we don't fully know Ben's sexuality. He could very well be bi and all that. Like he could very easily have feelings for Imogen as well. But I would have a conversation with Imogen and explain what happened. Because in my opinion, if I have this really good friend who is supposedly my best friend and I tell them that, he mistreated my boyfriend so poorly. He has treated my boyfriend like shit. And he has spoken to me like shit just from being with him because he is a homophobic piece of shit. I would then expect my friend to never even consider that an option. To never even consider getting with Ben. Because if Imogen then did, if Imogen had all of this information and she still thought to herself, well, I like him though. Maybe I can change him. That would really disappoint me as a friend and it would kind of ruin the friendship in my eyes. So... I think Nick needs to have that conversation just for his own peace of mind, just so that he can feel, just so he can feel safe in their friendship, you know, because I just, uh, the thought of the guy who you hold such resentment for just because he's such a prick, the idea that your best friend is going to like have feelings for him and try and date him. No, I couldn't handle that. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not mature enough to be able to get past those feelings at all. But yes, anyway, let's move on to the big hitters. So Nick and Charlie. Charlie, this episode, he, there weren't a lot of things that we explored that were different. The only things that were different was the moment with his parents, obviously telling them and their change of opinion. I already spoke on it, but it's kind of, it's not sad, like it's expected, but it is kind of like, ugh, the, the reason that they didn't think that Nick and Charlie would be an option is because he was this like rugby lad that they didn't think could ever possibly be gay by whatever into men. It's, it's frustrating, but they are they are supportive parents. I'm not going to get down on them for it, but it is going to add a new dynamic to their relationship that they can't have these moments anymore because I wonder if that's going to cause issues because now that they got used to these sleepovers, now that they got used to spending so much time together in private with doors closed and all that, I wonder if it's going to make them either feel uncomfortable or it's going to affect their relationship in a way that... They feel like they don't have their privacy anymore. They don't have these moments together and it's going to feel a bit, I don't know. It's going to feel like they can't have those moments, you know, like for instance, if Nick feels uncomfortable having the door open or even Charlie feels uncomfortable with his parents being able to hear their conversations and all that, maybe it will negatively impact their relationship, but I guess we will see. I do think that his parents could have gone into it a little more happy. I do think that going into it being like, frustrated like the way that they said like is he going on this paris trip oh that explains why you've been so excited about it all this time you could have like you could have gone into it being a bit more like oh that explains why you've been happy da, da. but like well, you will need to keep your door open now he can't come over at sleepovers i hope you understand like there are a lot better ways to go about it than like i don't know they got a little bit defensive it was kind of like he had wronged them by not telling them sooner or something which 
I do understand that as well, only because that could feel to them like a betrayal of trust that he hasn't told them. And he's just so carelessly had these sleepovers and all that and not explained it to them. They could feel like as parents, they failed a little bit in that regard by not picking up on it sooner. So it could be their own internal feelings that are causing it. But I feel like they could have been a bit better, but I'm not going to get down on them because at least they're not fucking homophobic. <laughs> but I mean, in terms of like, I feel like Nick's house would probably feel a little bit more comfortable in that regard. Because even if Nick's mum asks the exact same things, I feel like just having your mum there, just having Nick's mum in the house while they're having these moments, I feel like I would feel a little bit more comfortable than knowing that like my sister, my dad and my mum are all in the house while this door's open and we're spending time together. You know what I mean? Like I would feel a little bit like, Ugh, I don't like this, you know? But yeah, now Nick, Nick, we dealt with a lot in terms of the whole coming out experience and how it affects you, how it is such a hard thing to do, how it, like you could go into it fully being like, okay, I'm going to do it easy piss easy i'm just gonna go up to her i'm gonna be like imogen look we're together hope you understand cool yeah but at the end of the day it's not that easy you get to the moment the anxiety takes over and the easiest route is to just not say anything and that is what happened with nick but well done nick for actually going and telling her that is absolutely insane so it's crazy that he's i think what's happened here is i was about to say it's crazy because he was able to come out to his mum and then come out to his best friend so quickly after everything happened with Charlie and all that. But I think what it is, is it's so rare to have this good support system. It's so rare to have this like big group of Charlie's friends who are all supportive. And it's not just like they're supportive allies. It's like when you've actually got people within the group who are also queer, like they are also part of the community, that alone already bigs you up and it gives you that big support system. So the fact they have that, Plus, you know that Charlie's family are good with everything. And plus, you know that your mum is good with everything. Like, they have got the perfect support system. So I think that is why Nick has found this so easy compared to a lot of people in regards to the fact that it's not easy for him. He is still struggling with it a lot. And he is going to struggle when it comes to telling all the rugby boys and all that. Because that's a big, like, uh, what could happen? But... I think the reason it's been such a quick turnaround for him is because of this support system. Is because they have allowed him to feel safe. They've allowed him to feel like i don't know it's it's strange to put it in a logical standpoint but it's more so like you have the numbers advantage like when you actually have this big support system like one person not agreeing with it one person thinking it's wrong will not hurt as much when you have this support system you have these people with you you know so i'm very glad that nick feels safe enough that he's feeling uh, good within himself to go and tell people you know but yeah the rugby lot is going to be a hard one i don't know how he's going to go about that and i don't know what their reaction is going to be i mean Harry is obviously outwardly homophobic. And if he is the leader of the group, if they hold social respect for him, then in that kind of like rugby environment where they're all a team and if he's the leader, then you would feel a lot more inclined to follow along with him. So I think it's all very dependent on his reaction. And I think it's safe to say that his reaction is going to be negative. So I'm not looking forward to that. I'm not looking forward to the telling the rugby boys and how that will change Nick and if it feels like he doesn't want to be on the team anymore how that will change him because it's such a big part of his life but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see but yes anyway with all of that said that was an absolutely fantastic episode I'm so fucking happy that we're getting back into it in terms of YouTube uploads they're going to be weekly. It's going to be one episode a week. I am going to record episode two right now and put that up with episode one on Patreon. So there is going to be an extra episode ahead on Patreon. Full uncut reactions as always. So if you're interested in that, hop over there. We also have five other shows going on at the moment. We got The Vampire Diaries, The Originals, Strange New Worlds, Star Trek show, His Dark Materials, which is a really good show as well, and Merlin. So if you're interested in any of those, they are also over there. But yeah, we're going to keep weekly uploads on YouTube. Going to get back into posting the originals and the Vampire Diaries as well on YouTube because I know I've been very behind. But yes, anyway, with all that said, thank you very much for watching. I've left a link down below to my Patreon. We'll be able to find the early in the cut reactions to The Heartstopper and all the other shows that I do. Also left a link to my Twitch, my Discord, and my socials. So be sure to follow them if you are interested. And yes, thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.